Up until this point, the playback speed of the samples that we load into Simpler have been governed by the MIDI note with which we trigger them. If I trigger them with a C3, the sample played back at its original rate. If I trigger it with a C4, twice as fast, C2, half as fast. Same thing with one shot, but then in the slice mode, we had a specific MIDI note which would trigger a specific slice of our sample, starting from C1 and working chromatically up. With the addition of the warp feature in the new Simpler, we're able to decouple or break the relationship between the pitch of the sample and the playback speed using the same warp algorithms that we've seen in audio clips and other locations within Ableton Live. So to break this relationship between the pitch and the playback speed, all we have to do is come into our Simpler and enable the warp function. Now as I play a low note, Although the sample is pitched down, it plays back at the original rate. If I jump up two octaves, playing back at the original rate, pitched up an octave, um, and starting to sound a little bit weird. And that's because the warping algorithm is starting to take effect in how it's either stretching or compressing this sample to make it snap to the grid that we're working with. So let's take a look at these warping algorithms. The first one here in the default is beats, and this one is best suited for preserving rhythmic or percussive samples. So it's all about preserving the transient. And the transient is, if we zoom in on this sample, the transient is the very beginning of the change in the waveform. So here we can see to the left, one thing was happening, and then here at 1.2, a new event within our audio waveform is beginning to happen. So in beats mode, it's gonna preserve that little start of that change, and then it's going to manipulate or utilize the rest of that portion of the waveform up until the next transient in order to either stretch or compress this audio file. And then if we look to the left of our warp algorithms, we can see what else it's doing to preserve that or to remove or insert more information in order to either stretch or compress it. So we first set what do we want to preserve, either the transients or any rhythmic value. And then how do we fill in the space after that? First mode is forward and reverse. So it's going to play that transient exactly as it was, then it's going to read through the rest of the file up until the next transient or whatever I've told it to preserve. And then if it still needs to make up more time, then it will play backwards through that sample until it gets back to nearly the transient. And if it still needs more time before the next transient is supposed to occur, read forward. And it's going to repeat that process until we reach the moment in time that the next transient is supposed to occur in relationship to whatever grid or beats per minute or tempo we're working with within our project. Then the env here specifies how much of that space should we fill in. So if I greatly decrease the tempo here, so let's go up to my tempo, drop it all the way down to 20 beats per minute, and then I hold down a note. We can hear it going forwards and backwards, and then that transient, and then forwards and backwards. If I decrease that to say zero, we're not gonna hear any of that space filled in. We'll only hear the transients. which sounds like a very gated or staccato sounding version of this sample. And as I work back up, we'll slowly become more connected and slowly fill in more of the space. So that's the beats mode. We then have the tones mode. Tones is better suited for preserving monophonic or melodic lines. And then the grain size specifies how big of a section of our audio waveform is this mode looking at to determine the pitch or the note that is supposed to be playing back at that uh, moment. So if I hold down a note now, we can hear that we, our rhythm of this sample is really starting to kind of blur as our grain size uh, is increased or decreased. So with a smaller grain size, we'll get more rhythmic accuracy, but less frequency accuracy or pitch accuracy. With larger grain sizes, better pitch, but worse rhythm. We can already hear, all the way back at this moment, we're already starting to hear that snare sound work its way into the synthesized or recreated sound. Which is really kind of a cool sound. So a lot of these warp modes have um, a lot of creative potential outside of their intended purpose. So that's the tones mode. Texture is better suited for monophonic, I'm sorry, polyphonic or um, chordal passages, so when we've got more than one note happening at a time, like piano, uh, 
uh, chords or string patches or something like that. And we still see that same grain size, which is how big of a window or how big of a portion of our audio sample is this warping algorithm looking at to determine what notes are occurring at that moment in time. But then we also see this flux, or we could also think of this as random. And what that random does is it allows us to jump the grain size around so it's not just looking at the moment in time that we specified with our grain size, but it's looking at some moments around it as well. And what this can help with is kind of smoothing out the sound. So if I work with a really small or no fluctuation versus lots of fluctuation, we can hear a lot of sounds from distance uh, or greater distance being incorporated into the moment that we're actually playing back from that sample. So in the case of the sample that we're working with here, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to be working in this mode with lots of flux because it's really screwing up the playback or the originality of this sample. Um, but if I was working with another sample that was more chordal like a sustaining uh, string quartet or something like this, this could sound a lot better uh, at greatly stretched or slowed down speeds. The next mode here is the repitch mode and this is going to operate just like a record player does that if I want to play back the sample at a slower tempo the pitch is also going to drop so it's a way of preserving we still have the same relationship to our grid but you can hear now that the pitch has dropped with it as well so if I jump back up to 120 No matter which note I trigger it with, it's always sounding the same. Um, so repitch mode just operates like a record player. As I slow down the speed of my project's tempo, the pitch of the sample drops as well. So Then the last two here, Complex and Complex Pro, are um, combinations of the first three. Complex just having no parameters that we can manipulate, and Complex Pro having some parameters that we can manipulate. Uh, in relationship to that warping algorithm, but it's just combinations of the first three where it's going to dynamically assess what type of audio we're working with and work to um, best stretch that in that moment in time. So the last three parameters that we have here are the only basic controls that we have for um, manipulating how our sample aligns to the grid. So if we worked with a regular audio sample, go grab, drag and drop that into a slot here, and then enable warping. We have warp markers here that I can use to align specific moments within the grid um, to, or specific moments within the sample to the grid. If I look at um, the sample inside of Simpler, you'll see that I only have the option of um, a suggested number of bars that I could align this to. So I could click this and it's aligned it at two bars. It looks like in this case it actually jumped it to four bars. Um, so this is always going to be some sort of suggested bar length that Ableton thinks this sample should be at. And then I can use the divide by or multiply by two to either um, have it be aligned to a less, lesser number of bars, half the number of bars, or twice the number of bars. So just kind of multiplying or dividing the playback speed of that sample by two. And that's all we get. I can't go in and move any of these alignment points within Simpler. Any of that that I'd want to do, I should have done before importing that sample into Simpler. So I strongly suggest that with samples that you're working with, maybe you're sampling something from the internet or some external source or something that you've created already inside of Ableton, go through and properly align that sample to the grid and crop it down to just the portion you want to work with before importing it into Simpler. Because there's not a whole lot of control for how that's going to align in here. So again, warping allows us to break that relationship between the playback speed of the sample and the pitch of the sample, something we hadn't before seen inside of Simpler.